RFD 900 Plus Radio Configuration Part 2. This video is made in part of a video series for the Eclipse Ballooning Project. This is Part 2, assuming you have watched the previous video on the RFD 900 and how to set the settings on the radio using the RFD modem tools utility. Uh, what I'm going to go into on in this video is just a couple of settings that you can use to avoid crosstalk or interference from other nearby RFD 900 radios. Uh, we're going to want to look at the data sheet on RF Design's website and we'll also be using the RFD modem tools. First the modem tools I'll just read the settings here so that everything looks the same as it would if you were using it. Oh, and I didn't set my baud rate correctly. I am using a radio that has been configured already with the original settings that are covered in the previous video. So if you have two radios that are within, well, I'd say 60 miles or so, we have been able to receive a picture from just over 40 miles and almost below the horizon. So if you have two radios that are within 60 miles or less, they are able to talk to each other. And if you have two pairs of radios that you do not want to talk to each other, you can easily remedy this by selecting a different net ID. Now the net ID, there's quite a few. I'm not sure how many there are. I know there's over 200 of them. But if you're just to select one of these in your pair of radios, the ground station, and payload being on the same net ID will pretty much assure that those two radios are only talking to each other. A radio that receives a packet intended for a different net ID, it will just ignore that packet. If that packet is meant for the same net ID, it will listen to that packet. So the firmware on the radio will ta automatically take care of this. It will only listen to the packets that are intended for it. It will ignore the packets that are not intended for it. In some extreme cases, when the radios are very close to each other, we have run into RF interference. And you can remedy that by changing the minimum and maximum frequency. Now this is just allocating how much bandwidth or what band you are using in the 900 megahertz band. So the only time that we have really run into this RF interference is when we actually had four radios in the same room or four pairs of radios in the same room. Uh, just doing testing and demos and one of the radios was just getting errors trying to talk to each other as soon as we turned the other radios off or changed the minimum or maximum frequency they were on it, the problem went away so this is more of a case of just RF interference and the radios being too close to each other since the radio is only operating at one watt uh, as soon as you get any reasonable distance away from each other uh, you don't have to worry about the RF interference very much, but if your ground station is going to be right next to somebody or if you're doing testing with someone in the same room or just something to be aware of to avoid RF interference, you do have the option to change the minimum and maximum frequency and set a band of frequencies that you're using. Most of these go in 1 megahertz blocks. And if you look at the data sheet on RFD's website, you should have this web page uh, bookmarked. It's a product page for the RFD 900 plus modem. And in their data sheet, they do show the bandwidth that is used at the different air rates, like the air data rates. So it's on page eight. Of the data sheet, we got the occupied bandwidth in kilohertz and the air data rate. We are running at either 48 or 64, so you're going to be somewhere right around 350 to 400 kilohertz of bandwidth that the radio is using. But since we've only have one megahertz increments here in the settings, I mean, no matter how fast you set that air data rate which is this air, air speed here. It's what correlates to these numbers here on the x-axis. 
no matter where you set that, the most bandwidth you're going to be using is a little over 700 kilohertz. And since we have increments of 1 megahertz, pretty much one of these smallest windows, you can get by with the smallest increment of settings in the RFD modem tools. Preferably you would want about 150 kilohertz cushion on either side of this band that you're using. There's a good chance you will have that if you're just to set this in a 1 megahertz gap and be running around 48 to 64 kilobits per second of the air data rate. But I still would not put two pairs of radios right next to each other. Say you had four radios, you had one, you had two different ground station payload pairs. I probably wouldn't put one at 914 to 915 and then the next one from 915 to 916. I would at least go one megahertz step away or even go from the bottom end on one pair of radios, say like a 908 to a 909 megahertz or even a 910 would be okay. And then set the next pair of radios, start the minimum frequency somewhere up around like 916, 917 or so. Now most users really shouldn't have to worry about this. This is just if you're in very close proximity of other radios. Like if you're in the same room doing testing, or if you have two ground stations that are sitting right next to each other. Other than that, if you're within 60 miles of somebody, you can get by with just setting a different net ID. And since there's so many of them, the chances of somebody being on the same net ID are pretty slim. But something just to be aware of if uh, there's ballooning groups that are going to be taken off and have ground stations really close to each other. Thanks for watching.